I'm not sure that, um, and I mean this with nothing but love and respect, but I, I just, I don't think we're not the ones to give the world another sort of, you know, heavy metal version of Highway Star or Smoke on the Water. I, I just, I, that's not maybe our thing so much. I, I think we, we obviously we have tried over the years to, um, the best of our ability to kind of uh, avoid the obvious. <laughs> It's the anniversary of Machine Head, uh, which was one of the great Deep Purple records. I think it's the 40th anniversary this year. And a whole bunch of bands are, um, are doing um, songs from that album. And I'm a huge Deep Purple fan. As a young kid, uh, you know, it's one of, the, one of the reasons I wanted to get in a rock and roll band was to be as loud as Deep Purple. And so um, I've, I've become friends with those guys. I've sang with them quite a few times, and uh, and I just thought, you know, I'd love to sort of tip my hat to them and say, uh, you know, how influential they were on me and on lots of uh, other musicians. Obviously, there's guys that were in this room today recording. They gave birth to the kind of players like myself and Eddie Van Halen. All of us grew up listening to that, and we said, that's our foundation. You've got to be as good as that, as interesting as that, as original as that, and, uh, and don't be afraid to look back to build upon roots. We got in here today and literally played the song twice, you know, and, and I know these guys are all seasoned vets, you know, they're, they're really, really, you know, great players who are very, very serious musicians, but you know, they um, they all dropped their guards and, and just got in and had some fun today and it was just, you know, and it showed and it's, you know, it was a, it was a great track to cut and uh, hopefully it'll, you know, you know, make its way onto the, of the, uh, the, the uh, Machine Head tribute album, which is really lovely. It was like one of the coolest things I've been involved with in a long time, and, and we had a lot of fun. And that song was very challenging. I got to tell you that for free. It was a, it was a real challenge. I, 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 I was, I was like sweating like I was on a on a, on a normal concert gig. Let me tell you something about Machine Head. That was a life-changing record. Uh, I was in junior high school. And that record came out, and I devoured that record. That record, I mean, obviously Smoke on the Water was the big hit, but, the, uh, but I really loved it that the album, the deeper tracks, were, were, were to me um, the ones that I really connected with. And maybe Emilio was like, was funky and bouncy and great and the whole record fantastic it's more like what we made like this but it just sounds more like you to me at least all right you got it for me i grew up on on this music you know this is very um my this is the roots of where i first started playing music in the drum so this is very natural for me you know to play play with Glenn and and the music that we love and um, you know it's just uh, any chance I get I jump at it we, em we embrace I love the, we embrace the rock we stuff embrace you know? it, we embrace it we embrace it and we do like you said when we do our own thing you know for being a drummer Ian Pace was just he was my hero he was my idol he was my like, first real influence <laughs> We got it. Oh, if it was up to him. JD, he would have picked uh, Papa Don't Preach. I mean, that's what he's into. I mean, I would, man, but, you know. <laughs>
I think you're always just going to associate Deep Purple with Ian Gillen. It's just like you're always going to associate Black Sabbath with Ozzy. I mean, I, I do, you know, I mean, nothing for that, but I mean, it, it is weird because, I mean, I obviously have different situations like ACDC with Bond, but all of a sudden they went on with all the success with Brian. And then same thing with Van Halen. They get rid of Dave, and then it's Sammy Hagar. It's like through the loop success, you know, with yeah. Sammy. So, but uh, but not for nothing. I mean, you know, like all my friends would either call it Van Hagar. It's yeah. a, it's a different sounding band yeah. altogether. Yeah. I mean, ACDC pretty much stayed in the same the same zip code yeah. of style of music. Yeah. But I mean, uh, but when I think of Deep Purple, I just uh, I th when I think of Father Coverdale, I think of Dave. Probably covered out with White Snake. Yeah, right. Right. That's his band. A lot of these people nowadays miss the, the blues boat. They really did. Because if you really look at Sabbath, the Sabbath blues, and Deep Purple, I mean, just those big three bands. So blues bands. It's the whole foundation of that house, of their houses, is based in blues. Yeah. All of them. I mean, if you ask them to play at Red House, all of them, they, they, they jam on. They well. Then these kids nowadays just practice scales, diatonic scales, and, and fast, as fast as they can go and clean, but they miss the boat on, on phrasing and blues. And singing, you know, singing, not just go, you know, whatever. They don't feel it. Try and bring it, you know, like trying to educate them about you know, it, man, you know? Because, you know, then, 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 that scales. When you're playing blues, you're actually, you're, it's music. You know what I mean? So, well, yeah, well, I mean, you know, like Richie Blackmore could play, you know, Highway Star, all the scales and everything like that. But then you listen to a lot of the other stuff. I mean, it's it's blues-based stuff. Yeah. I'm sure John Ward had a lot to do with the classical influence that went into the band to decide yeah. what Richie was doing. You know, John may have influenced that or whatever. You'd have to ask the guys. But, I mean, Richie was a big-time blues guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... And so, Cage, and so is Jimmy Page, and so is Tony Iommi. Definitely, man. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's Blues just riffs. Like, yeah. God, Highway Star, uh, that's, that's, that's an epic track. Putting it on and hearing a highway star and just thinking, oh my god. We played Highway Star for a long time and that was one of our favorite cover songs. Yeah, yeah. We had a blast playing it, especially the two of us, because we did the guitar lead, you know, and we'd harmonize, and so that was a real, you know, cool part of the set for us. Here's a funny thing. I mean, this is a, this is an odd thing, but I've noticed that when when any guitar player goes to redo a track for Machine Head, um, it's almost like with the way they approach Zeppelin or something. They they overdo it, and it's not because they're making a mistake or anything like that. It's really because the music is so powerful. The memory of the music is so powerful that you just think you have to turn up louder, have more distortion or more power. And we're often shocked when we go back to the original recordings and we say, wow, that's actually quite delicate. There's a lot of space. Richie's not playing there at all. And then when he comes in, it's kind of delicate, you know? And and uh, and, and Ian's just playing this really light shuffle and it's, but it's somehow, it's big, you know? Well, you know, we talked about it, and everybody felt the same way. There was just 
we were petrified of having to go into a studio and try to redo something that was already perfect. We just thought it would always, in our minds, in our hearts, it would always pale in comparison. And so we thought, well, we can only you know, do a live version, so do we have a live version? And we looked, and there was that crazy, reckless, abandoned version uh, from the Fillmore, um, where I think I, I actually started playing a different song. And it was really funny the way it just fell in. And, uh, uh, but it was, it was a great moment. I think it captured uh, the foot doing what we do best, which is just freak out. And, uh, but then I think the love for, for Deep Purple came you know, through from everybody's performance in the band. Zeppelin were much closer to a kind of a blues thing, you know, an American blues thing. Sabbath at the time obviously were, you know, were slow and heavy and, and had that kind of weight. But what Deep Purple had, uh, I mean, if you listen to a song like Hard Love and Man from, you know, it was recorded in 1969. You know, on the Deep Purple and Rock album, I mean, it's one of the, it's one of the first songs to have like kind of continuous kind of chunky like down picking, which is all the stuff that Judas Priest did. You know, ten years later, and then bands like ourselves and whatever kind. Of, but you know, Richie Blackmore, 1969, Hard Loving Man, uh, Highway Star. Uh, you know, even like uh, Fireball, for instance, you know, the song Fireball has double bass. You know, it's one of the first songs to kind of do fast double bass. Mm. So all the stuff that we do and have been doing for the last 30 years and, and, and you know, the bands in the 80s and 90s and last decade, I mean, it all traces back to Deep Purple and obviously to a degree Black Sabbath and, 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 and Led Zeppelin. but. Purple had their own niche within that trio. I never felt so bad before. Before. <laughs> What we're talking about is the Machine Head record, which, you know, which is unbelievable. It's a uh, 40, 40 year anniversary of the Machine Head album. And, uh, we chose to uh, record the track Never Before, which wasn't a track that I really remember being uh, big in the States. You know, I think it was like, I believe it was the second single they released on that album. And you know, I'd played Highway Star many, many times, space trucking, but never before wasn't a song that I that I gravitated towards as much as the others on that record. But it was cool to record it, and I, it was interesting playing it, how fun it was to play. My favorite song, funnily enough, on Machine Head is actually Never Before, go figure. Because um, when I was asked to do it, I jumped at it because of that reason, you know, I've always been a fan of the song. Um, I didn't even realize it had been a single, that's how out of the loop I was back in the day. Um, but it was one of those songs that when I heard the album I was totally drawn to and always singing in the shower. So when I got the, uh, the nod from Matt with the Kings of Chaos to do this, I was determined to do it. Being asked to do the Machine Head uh, tribute record was just, you know, a real honor and, you know, I, would, I wouldn't have uh, passed on that 
and the other artists that are on the record is incredible. And the fact that I was able to get Duff McKagan, who I know comes more from a punk world, to turn him on to Deep Purple, and and Steve Stevens is a huge Blackmore fan, so to get Steve on the record, and Joe Elliott to sing the vocal, I mean, I think we did a pretty close interpretation of the original form of the song. You know, rocked it up a little bit, and maybe sonically sounds different. I wanted it to be a bit more rough and ready than what people expect from me on a Leopard record. Um, so it's kind of got a bit of road throw to it, which suits a 70s song anyway. It's a bit gruff, um, which I do quite well. It's kind of, my voice is a little lower, but in the same kind of intensity as I would have sung on, on a High and Dry album or something like that, which I think suits a Deep Purple song. So I was, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more organic than the kind of processed sound that, that Leopard went through. But I hope you enjoy our version of Never Before and, um, and, uh, we love being involved in this Machine Head record, and congratulations, Steve Purple. You deserve it, and you deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame next year, I hope. And um, thank you very much. I mean, I was Sabbath, you know, I got turned on to Sabbath first, then obviously Zeppelin, and then, you know, but Deep Purple, I remember, you know, obviously because Richie Blackmore, and then obviously Smoke on the Water and everything, you know, it's such an iconic tune. You got Smoke on the Water, Iron Man, you know, stay away to heaven. I mean, I'm just saying, he's like, you know, the first song you learn when you start playing guitar, is that because you can learn it on one string, it's either Smoke on the Water and then Iron Man, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, another one bites the dust, da 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 you know, so, you know. Every kid loves Smoke on the Water. Every, everybody's first guitar, they pick it up and try and play that riff. You can't copy, you can't copy Deep copy Purple original. Smoke on the Water. No. You just can't, you, you know. But uh, it, like Flame and Lips is perfect for perfect choice be to do that song. Smoke on the Water, I mean, it, it's one of the most legendary songs. It's the first song every kid learns how to play on the guitar. Why these guys are not like the first guys in the Hall of Fame, I'll never know. I try not to get it. I, I, well, the the cut that he sent me with the guy vocal was just the real straight up version, yeah. you know, deep purple version. And then I just didn't want to stray too far from it, but I kind of fucked around with it and tweaked it out. So I think okay. it's something good. It's just the cut, like how I was saying with the walking bass line and kind of your issue with the walking bass line. I wanted to groove a little more. Yeah, I think that'll sit under the vocal still fine. Whoa. On the Lake Geneva show line. That's kind of where I'm riding with it, you know, not flipping it up too much, but just a little bit of my own inflection. We all came out to He wants that, some of that swamp, beastie, fucking nutty vocal. 
I will give it to you, Carlos. I like it. Funky Cloud was probably the production assistant for the band. You know what I'm saying? Because the production assistant would not let the band go into a flaming house. He'd be like, let me go save them. You know what I'm saying? I just sang a gang load of them, so there's some, yeah. there's some really good shit in there, so how it'll... Isn't this fun, man? Yeah, I, can't I like believe, it. I can't believe they pay us to do this yeah, shit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you very thank much, you, man. Thank you so much. I thank appreciate you so much, it. Man. Okay, cool. Sweet, sounds good. Cool, that's a wrap. Deep Purple Space Trucking, that's, that's to me, is Deep Purple. You've got seven songs on Machine Head, and the eighth song, uh, when a blind man cries, recorded during the sessions. All eight of them, obviously, are great. All eight of them are unique. All, all eight of them, you know, Pictures of Home, Never Before, Lazy, um, uh, maybe I'm a Leo. I mean, e even the sort of the more album tracks or the deeper tracks, as they're called, um, you know, Never Before would be great. It's got such a different feel. Um, pictures of Home, you know, it's got more of a kind of a driving thing. Um, we could have had fun with all of them, but I, I just think that when a blind man cries, I always knew, I mean, I've had that song, I have a list in my head of songs Metallica should play um, before we break up or die or, you know, uh, fall prey to a, a relevance or whatever. And um, the, when a blind man cry, cries has always been one of those songs. I mean, it's been on a list in my head for years. So when this opportunity presented itself, that, that seemed to be the obvious one. In a cold month. I first heard one of Blind Man Cries, I don't know, 1983 or something. I, I wasn't aware of it because it was a B-side until Lars played it for me. Uh, great song, man. Nice ballad, really cool guitar solo. And, you know, just over over time, just like from just being around and hearing it, and just casually on, in, on the bus, dressing room, or at Lars' house, whatever. I got to know the song pretty well, and I was, always thought it was a great song. Lars put it forward, and that's because it's unique, it's out there, it's not on the record officially, it's in the realms of Machine Head in that session, I guess, or the riff was thought of in that session, <laughs> whatever the connection is. Um, and it was actually on a playlist of songs for Garage Inc. Garage Inc. was, it started really wide and then we kind of closed in on, you know, uh, trying to make it eclectic and, uh, you know, Garage Inc. meaning the album where we did all our cover songs. And that was one of the ballads that had been on, I think, a list a couple times to do. Obviously it's a love letter, obviously it's a token of my appreciation, obviously, you know, I am, uh, excited to be able to give this 
uh, to these musicians and this band who has made such a difference in my life and, and obviously Deep Purple is, is the single biggest musical entity in, in my 48 years on this planet and, and will always be that way. Um, so, you know, getting a chance to immerse myself in this has obviously been a lot of fun, but I, yeah, and a, a, a lifelong dream finally happening. Yeah.